he's not a follower, uh, and he's telling them uh, straight up, this is what I think is necessary, this is what I think is needed, and hopefully they'll fall in line with him, and he'll, he'll, he'll cut a good deal. You Alex. know, I've heard you say... Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the bandango? How about that? The Scaramouche is back. He's on the Fox uh, right now, sitting on the, uh, I guess, the outnumbered desk, um, talking about uh, Donald Trump and what they're trying to get done on DACA and what the American people hired him to do. So he hasn't disappeared. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back. He will not disappear. He's a, he's a, I see him on that big uh, desk and far away. He's kind of a little guy. He's, he's not He's not a big he's man. not a big no, man. No, that's all right. But he's a fighter. Yeah. He's a scrapper. Maybe he has short man syndrome. That's why he acts tough. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's got that square jaw. Looks like he could take a punch. Yeah, but he's 5'3". Um, is that all? I, that's what I, looks, I don't know. That's he what he looks like on TV. Yeah, the co-host there kind of, um, Harris Faulkner kind of towers over him. Yeah. So you, you may be onto yeah. something there. I don't know. Let me get to a couple of phone calls here. Um, Big let, me get, let me get to Crystal. Uh, Crystal, thanks for holding on. Hi, Mark. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. It's driving me insane hearing about <laughs> Oprah being the president. Only the mindless people that sit at home all day and, and eat bonbons on the couch are going to be the ones that actually get up off the couch and go vote for somebody like yeah. that. Well, Just that's the because, scary part. They might not have voted uh, otherwise, but they're going to get up and go vote for her. Those are the same and, people that voted and, for Obama. And that's the people that want our children to grow up in a country of socialist communism, everything's for free, ain't nothing for free. We're paying for it. That's what they don't get. Well, it, it's, I paid for it. When I paid for it, it ain't free to me. I can't go to another country and get free health care or free house or some food stamps. I get nothing. I'm a single female that's never been married and has no children, and I get robbed on my paycheck. I mean robbed. $400 a month comes out of my check for what? For a Section 8 person? Or this person is living in their basement with their parents till they're thirty something years old, still getting free health insurance when I gotta pay for it. The whole the whole Oprah thing is just so obnoxiously <laughs> ignorant. It's just out there to see what they can reel in is how I feel about that. Crystal, it's, well well put. I appreciate that. Uh, you, thank you. Thank you yep. my call. I had to get that on my chest. I'm glad I'm glad we let you get on the soapbox <laughs> today. Lord have mercy. Well <laughs> worth it. Thank you. And I only listen to you for educated, informed <laughs> You know, uh, in information because the TV, I can't even watch the news at all. Never can watch the news. I watched the Almond Report. When they got Cason on, I can't even watch it and I got to <laughs> flip it off because I can't take that nonsense. These people need to get their heads up, you know what, and start thinking logical. When this country gets going like Trump is making it go now, there ain't no way. And you know what, that Oprah or Michelle Obama or any of these people with their poise in the Democratic Party to do some shadiness is not going to happen. We are a smart, educated country, and we are going to take it back. Crystal, th opinion. you bet. Thank you for the call. But I, you know what I think she was trying to say there? That's you need that. to get your head out of your butt. <laughs> focus on the real issues. Yeah, I think that was it. That's almost a handshake call or a hand clap call. Well, it was, one nice, of it was nice there. of uh, Crystal to call yeah. up and make those points. I, I would agree with you. Good call, yeah. Crystal. <laughs> Let me get to Big Al. Al, how are you? Crystal, you're awesome. Now that you, you, had, you got that off your chest. Hey, those girls feel better. God love you. You're a patriot. Hey, uh, great show, you guys. Uh, Coxie, I want to make a pitch for the uh, – first off, thanks for everything you do for the police. I used to be one of those that uh, didn't think too kindly of them, had a few incidents. And now that all this has gone down, you guys, I wear a wristband every day. I walk up to them and say thank you and mean it. So very nice. Well, thank you for doing that. And uh, your man, my main man, is right. Oprah would absolutely get some get some play. And Coxie, I just want to tell you, your uh, <laughs> your emotion is coming through the radio loud and clear about what your vision is if Oprah is in the White House. Well, guess what, babe? The Democrats are feeling that right now, and it's <laughs> real for them. I think, yeah, you, yeah, they know they know what you do. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, their nightmare just happened with Trump, <laughs> and you're envisioning it, and it's coming through the radio, and you're just like, oh, my God. Well, guess what? It happened to the Democrats. Sorry. <laughs> Al, thanks See for the call. You, you bet. Did you put Al's check thanks. in the mail? I did, I did not, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> what he just described there makes me want to go buy some coloring books and uh, curl up with a blanket in the corner. Because I may not be functional like all these are liberals. You feeling, are you feeling snowflake? I'm going to need a faith base. <laughs> <laughs> Can you accommodate me? I think Jeff Allen let me curl up in his 
corner of his office. You know in there. what? Yeah. You know what? We'll build you a little blanket fort <laughs> on the back of this corner, and we'll give you some coloring books and crayons, and we'll just stick the mic in there yeah. so you can do. Uh, your show. Give him, give him a little space heater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next to Got to be careful; it blows fuses couple, around this joint. Oh, I heard about that. I know. <laughs> We've had all kinds of problems. Hey, Rick, thanks for holding on. Thanks for taking my call, Mark. Uh, great conversation. I got to tell you, I think this thing Trump is about to do with this. Uh, award thing he's going to give for the most fake needy and all that. I think that's kind of a scary thing. I think it could become the low point of his presidency. He's trying to be funny, but it's just going to be mean. I think it could be a real flop, and I, I think it's a bad, bad idea, and I can't believe he's doing it. Well, they delayed it. Maybe he's having second thoughts. Yeah, I think it can make him look really bad. I think it can make him look just angry and, and uh, just not funny. You know, I wonder if maybe – instead of doing a press conference like he claimed he was yeah. going to call, maybe they've talked him into just releasing it on Twitter. Maybe he'll just go to Twitter on it. You think? I'm just wondering, can Donald Trump really look any worse in the liberals' eyes? I mean, what can he, well, that's can true, he do but anything yeah. that's, that's going to make them angry or, or tick them off? Yeah, Rick, or thank, thank, any you, less thank you for the call. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he's worried about the, the left all that much, but, you know, but, but here's the bottom line. As a, as a recovering uh, uh, journalist... I, I just have to say that you you don't I mean I've lived through the other side of that where you feel like a either a political entity or someone is somehow trying to repress your ability to cover. That's not what this is. The criticism is that what what you're saying about it is not true. And in some cases he's right and in some cases he's not been right on that. And and ultimately the where you get into the red zone is is when we when we eat too much people already have no confidence in congress people are already losing their confidence in the in the presidency uh people are losing their confidence in the media where do they go to next i mean i i I just i mean it's okay i think if somebody puts out a story about you that's defamatory or libelous or slanderous take them to court uh, feel free. To, it's a free country. Come out, criticize them if you want. Uh, we can't tear down the entire media. And I'm I'm the guy that gets on here three hours a day, five days a week, and I'm the first one to to call out CNN or Don Lemon or Jake Tapper or George Stephanopoulos or whoever it may happen to be who who's you know t- talking about the president's mental deficiency or the fact that they think he has Alzheimer's, which is outrageous. That's the kind of fake news stuff. That, that they need to go after, and that's the kind of stuff the public will appreciate. But day-to-day stories on on the White House, I, I think he's kind of he's got to he's got to temper that a little bit. So I, I see where Rick's coming from there. That could be taken the wrong way, depending on what he would say in a press conference like that. It's going to be carried by the whole nation. Yeah, I I think it would fall into what he's already done for his whole candidacy and presidency so far is to ridicule the press and to try to show the public what they're really about. And I think this would, it would it may be more effective kind of doing it in a, in a humorous way. I don't expect that he's going to change. No, uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't. And I don't think that he's um, – having an impact either because i think it's just caused cnn and these other agencies to double down but listen to chuck schumer or to jake tapper yesterday on cnn cut number four liz pop that up for us sorry here we go wolf's reporting should be met with skepticism the book is riddled with errors and rumors and in his marketing of the book wolf made the unbelievable assertion that 100 percent of the president's family members and top advisors have concerns about his mental fitness for the job, 100%. That's simply not true. Yeah. So, finally, I mean, for a week, the media has been trumpeting this as groundbreaking, breaking news from the inside of this, and immediately Republicans and conservatives looked at Wolf and said, no, wait a minute, this isn't, that's not right. I didn't yeah. say that, I didn't say and And on CNN, on a 24-hour news basis, they played this thing like it was Watergate, and now you've got the likes of Jake Tapper and some other admitting Michael Wolf's credibility is in question. I heard Michael Wolf yesterday, and I'm almost quoting him verbatim. He basically said that if you read that all of everything in this book may not be 
factually correct in the time frame and context and all that. But he said, if you read this book and it comes across to you as true and truth, then it is. <laughs> that's ex- I swear, Mark, that's what he said. If you oh, read this book God. and it comes across as truth to you, then that. it is true. That is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I'm right. almost quoting him verbatim. That is <laughs> we'll, what he said. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to play that next hour because, unfortunately, Chris, um, we've run out of time. Yeah, it's oh, unbelievable. No. I see it here. It's cut 24. We'll yeah. get to it next hour. I was, un- I was I- incredulous. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks for coming in. Uh, listen to the Weekend Report, of course, every uh, Saturday at 4 o'clock here on FM News Talk 97.1 with uh, Chris.